The FBI delivers the FD-1023 form over to Congress. We have some questions about what this delivery entails. Did they drop the document off or did they just show it? Or is it in possession of Congress now? We're going to unpack all of it. But this was a very important document. We've been battling over this thing for a long time. The FBI said, well, we kind of really can't confirm whether we have it or not. Then it's kind of, we do have it. Then it's kind of relevant. And then we'll show it to you real fast. They just said, here, look at it real fast. Flashed it. And they said, okay, that's it. And then now, they were going to hold Christopher Ray, this guy, in contempt this morning, the day of this recording, and something happened all of a sudden, and Comer and the Oversight Committee say he caved. Now, the press release is going to give us some more details on it, but you see here, this hearing was scheduled for June 8th, 2023 at 9 a.m. This was the official contempt proceeding from congress.gov, the full committee to consider the resolution recommending contempt of Congress for Christopher Wray for failing to comply with a subpoena. It was all scheduled today. We were all excited about it. Yes, perfect. Let's get it, baby. We've been waiting for this. Oh, postponed. Oh, man. So it better be worth it, right? We want to see what they got. And Apparently, it's pretty good. So the press release came out from Representative Comer. We're going to hear him explain a little bit more about it. But he says, after weeks of refusing to even admit that the record exists, the FBI has agreed to cooperate and is now allowing all members of the Oversight Committee to review this unclassified record alleging a bribery scheme by then VP Biden. More here, which we'll take a look at, which is the press release put out by the Oversight Committee saying that Comer forces the FBI to cooperate to allow all members of the committee to review the Biden bribery record, saying the Oversight Committee issued the following statement after the FBI cave, rubbed their noses in it. Yeah, what a bunch of just weaklings. Actually, it's very good. Thank you for following constitutional order. Should have done it at the beginning. Under the threat of holding Director Christopher Wray in contempt of Congress, and we will now allow all members of the committee to review the record and receive a briefing. Additionally, the FBI also is making two additional documents that were referenced in the FD-1023, also available for Comer and Raskin to review. So the full committee gets the original document, the ranking member and the chair, they get access to the supplements. The full committee business meeting to vote on holding Director Ray in contempt of Congress is now removed from the schedule. What do you mean, like permanently, or is this coming back? I mean, come on. After weeks of refusing to even admit the record exists, the FBI is Kate and is now allowing all members of the Oversight and Accountability Committee to review this unclassified record that memorializes a confidential human sources conversations with a foreign national, we talked about this previously, coming from Ukraine, presumably an executive at Burisma, which is where Hunter Biden got a board position for Lord knows what. That foreign national claimed to have bribed then-Vice President Joe Biden. Americans have lost trust in the FBI's ability to enforce the law impartially and demand answers. That's true. And we demand transparency and accountability, baby. We demand justice. All oversight committee members are allowed to review this record, saying this is an important step of conducting oversight and holding it accountable said, let's be clear, the allegations contained within this record are not closed as the White House and Democrats would have the American people believe. Former Attorney General Bill Barr, as we talked about previously, confirmed this information was sent to the Delaware U.S. Attorney for further review, and the FBI has confirmed it is being used in an ongoing investigation. We also know that the confidential human source who provided this information is highly credible and trusted, has worked for the FBI for over a decade, has been paid over six figures. The allegations contained within this record track closely with the rest of the investigation being done by the committee. We're going to continue to follow the facts for more. So very good news that we've got some progress. The contempt hearing has been removed from the schedule. And we're asking ourselves what was ultimately delivered. And this was what the agreement was. According to Comer, he was communicating this after hearing from the FBI that prompted the postponement of the contempt proceedings. But I will say this, Jesse, they're negotiating. They're offering deals now to try to cooperate with us in our investigation. What? And my investigation's always been about following the money and following all the leads that would point in the direction of explaining how the Biden families were receiving millions of dollars from our adversaries around the world. So I'm listening to the FBI's offers, but as of now, we still plan on moving forward. Now, there's a lot of smoke going around if you look up in the air. Congressman Comer, you said you're still negotiating with the FBI. What kind of deal are they trying to work out? You're just asking for them to 
comply with a subpoena and deliver the document to the full house, right? Right. Remember where we are, Jesse, two weeks ago, and Senator Grassley will testify to this, the FBI wouldn't even admit that this document existed. And now, not only are they admitting the document existed, they've allowed me to go in and look at a redacted version, and they're offering right now temporarily agreement here to let committee members go in and look at the document. Okay. But Jamie Raskin's in the well, his else? friends at the Washington Post and at CNN, you know, they've gone out and tried to discredit this document. They tried to discredit the whistleblower. They tried to say it had something to do with Rudy Giuliani and it did not have anything to do with Giuliani. You said in your monologue that Raskin said that this case had been closed. It has never been closed. But here's what I believe, Jesse. I don't believe that anyone's ever investigated this. Yeah. This is the whole problem that Senator Grassley has had from day one. No one has investigated this. Now I can assure the American people the House Oversight Committee is investigating this. We will use our subpoena power to trace every bank account that could potentially have been involved in this money laundering scheme. We believe that there's some reason that Biden family members are getting money all across the world. And we believe that this document is consistent with, with what we've seen in Romania and China and other countries around the world. That's why it's important to us. So, Congressman, if the document's been in Delaware with the prosecutor for a couple of years, what's been going on in Delaware? I don't know. That's a great question. I suspect Smoking nothing. crack. I just wonder if the prosecutor in Delaware even knew about the shell company. Rummaging through his garage, looking through classified documents. And all the bank accounts and all the money laundering that the Bidens were doing with the money they were receiving from our adversaries around the world. For all we know, and all that's been reported is the special prosecutor was only looking at tax evasion for a couple of years and lying on a gun application. If you're going to investigate the Biden family, you have to investigate not just tax evasion, but money laundering and racketeering and being an unregistered foreign agent and bribery. I think we're producing information that's actually helping the U.S. attorney in Delaware and helping the the special counsel that's investigating Joe Biden for mishandling classified documents. Well, the American people want to thank you, Representative Comer, and you, Senator Grassley, for uncovering more information about this situation, plus the New York Post, than anybody has in about two decades. Yeah, well, and the FBI is not even working at it either. Yeah, so Congress is doing the job of the FBI. They should have brought this to our attention a long time ago, but they happened to find out after 2000, about 17 is what we think it was. They got another report back in 2020. They covered the whole thing up. We know that the intelligence agencies through the CIA and others, including the FBI, all worked together to collude to suppress the Trump effort and shove Joe Biden into the Oval Office and down our throats, unfortunately. So the question that we had about this was, what did actually happen this morning. What was the transfer that occurred between the FBI and the Oversight Committee? Did FBI Director Ray leave it with you? Well, here's what we've got from Representative Andy Biggs from Arizona. Shout out. He says this. The FBI's FD-1023 form is in our possession. Hmm. Says, and if its content is consistent with our suspicions, then Joe Biden absolutely deserves to be impeached. No more talk and no more tweets. Now I'm presuming that this means it is in their possession indefinitely, not temporarily. And he's just saying, I'm looking at it right now. Why? Because I want them to go and Xerox this thing and put it on Twitter so we can all look at it. And I want all of the rest of America to see. But if it's just like in their possession at the moment, and then it's gonna be back in the possession of the FBI, that's a different story. So I'd like to know a little bit more of the details Details. certainly more will be revealed no doubt about it here's what big said impeached. about all of this where is this going they impeach trump are you going to move to impeach joe biden absolutely he would need to be impeached and then once he was impeached or hopefully there'd be some democrats in the senate that would recognize how grave the situation is and encourage him to resign like uh, goldwater did to nixon but but once he's out of there then he would have to be indicted because this is a gross criminal misconduct. And some would even suggest treasonous, but I'm holding my tongue on that just yet. But we have got to find out how extensive this was. And uh, then we have to take action. I mean, th th enough talk, talk is talk. But if we produce this evidence that's starting to pile up, by the way, it's there's so much evidence, it's voluminous. It's taking everything we have with our staff to go through this. But as it piles up, if it is consistent with where the direction it seems to be headed, he should be impeached. And the Democrats cannot defend them with the lies going on uh, that we, we heard earlier this week. They're going to have yeah. to come to grips with this thing. Woo. 
Woo! All right, so that is broad language, not quite treasonous, but certainly impeachable. We have other reaction from Marjorie. Here's what she said. She posted about this on Twitter. Reading this form today shows the pure distinction. This, this information, this source that came forward, it's a paid informant by the FBI. This has nothing to do with Giuliani. This has nothing to do with the information that he brought forward in 2020. It's totally separate and it's extremely credible because he's a paid informant. I made some notes after I left the skiff based on the information and I'll share that with you guys right now. Basically what was happening there is back in 2015, 2016, Burisma was looking to buy a U.S. based oil and gas company. And this came from being advised by Hunter Biden and his partners. Biden said Shokin was corrupt. That was around the time of this meeting was when Joe Biden as vice president had said that the prosecutor Shokin was corrupt. They hired Hunter on. That's that Ukrainian prosecutor that Joe Biden is talking about in that clip. The board to make the problems go away. That's what they specifically said. Hunter advised that they could raise more money if they bought a U.S. company. So the the informant was trying to do the right thing and trying to advise Burisma that they shouldn't go this route. They should hire an attorney, work out their problems that they were being investigated for because they were having other legal problems. And that's why they were being investigated by this prosecutor Shokin. The informant was advising them, don't go this route. Why would you buy another U.S. company while you're under investigation? That's not a good idea. So he's trying to tell them to do the right thing. The owner of Burisma said that Hunter was stupid and that his other business partner was smart. Well, that's he a, also that's, said that that's a pretty astute observation there. He paid five million to one Biden and he paid five million to another. Biden. Ten million bucks it was to the Biden. It a bribery to get Shokin fired and end the investigation into Burisma. So you see the connection. There's a Ukrainian prosecutor investigating a Ukrainian businessman. Businessman has Hunty on the Burisma board. He's there really for just political leverage. He knows nothing about what Burisma does. He's on there. So it is now up to Hunter to get the money from this Ukrainian oligarch who controls Burisma. 10 million bucks goes to Hunter, five to him, five to somebody else, maybe James, who knows, maybe somebody else. All works its way back into the Biden family through a number of different shell companies. Biden then goes out, puts the pressure on the State Department using his, his power as the vice presidency. And that's the clip where he says, well, if they wanted our $1 billion, you know, of foreign aid, then they were going to do what we told them to do. This was before the invasion and all the stuff. So then that happened and there were consequences for that. So the money was useful. And the whistleblower is articulating this entire thing for us. And this was the keystone. This is why they were fighting so hard on this. This is Pandora's box. Once this opens, they can start digging into everything else because now they know the FBI was in possession of it. The FBI was covering it up and it is brought by a very credible whistleblower who probably had a conversation with that person. That's what we were speculating yesterday, that the whistleblower wasn't just hearing third hand comment. It wasn't like a friend of a friend of a friend told him on a forum on a Facebook post. This was probably the whistleblower speaking with the Burisma oligarch, the Mikolo Zolchensky. And so all of it fits. He also told the informant this is common practice in Russia and Ukraine. It's common practice. It's part of business there. That's how their culture works, that they will pay bribery money in order to get business deals done. And that many businesses, they take that into account. They put it in their budget, basically when they're preparing to buy another company or start another company, that that's just normal. And so over in Ukraine, uh, for them to consider hiring Hunter Biden on the board in order to make their problems go away, which was the prosecutor Shokin, who was investigating Burisma for corruption and, and legal problems. This was definitely illegal for a vice president of the United States and their family members. The informant had asked the owner of Burisma if he was happy that Trump won, and he said no, he was not happy. Yeah, because they lost Remember, their boy. They lost their connection to the Biden crime family. Obviously, Trump comes in here and unsettles the whole scheme. They invested a lot of money into the Bidens. Yeah, of course they did. Yeah, of course they but he did say that it would take 10 years for all of us to find out the payments made to the Bidens. <laughs>
because of how many bank accounts there were. He said at the time there were no direct payments made to the big guy, but in a meeting later, after he had become more upset as things were unfolding, he told the informant that he has two pieces of evidence showing proof of payment to Hunter and specifically Joe Biden. Whoa! You see, I think what everyone needs to understand Whoa! is... Whoa, backing up on that. So can we just pause for a minute? I know we're all upset at Marjorie Taylor Greene for her debt debacle. I don't know what the hell happened there, but she's got a pretty good memory here. She just picked all of that up, right? You can't take notes on this stuff when you're in the skiff. And this leads me to believe that we're not gonna see this document. And it sounds like what she's reading from are notes about essentially, you know, it sounds like almost like a police report. It's a written narrative of a conversation between the FBI and this whistleblower. It's all documented, probably multiple pages, multiple paragraphs written as a narrative and she's reading it and just capturing all the details and she comes out and drops that bomb on us that the whistleblower says he's got documented details that it goes over to hunty and to joe all right that's big Woo. that he has two pieces of evidence showing proof of payment to hunter and specifically joe biden you see i think what everyone needs to understand is is that business owners place the most smart ones whether they're good or bad whether they perform their business in a legal manner or a corrupt manner they always keep records of their business payments accounts and receivables that's how it's done and this owner of burisma kept a record especially of the bribes and if you're in an industry where you Five have million. to pay bribes to get your business deals done then you always want to keep keep a record yeah. and keep proof of your bribes because that's how you make sure you get people to follow through on what they're done with. What I Busta. read today is, again, shocking. It just as what I read in the Treasury Department with all the SARS report is shocking. But we are going to continue following this investigation. We're going to continue to look into every single thing that we can uncover. We need the FBI to keep cooperating with us. That's extremely important. And I have very high expectations of Christopher Ray that he'll do the right thing and continue showing the, us the information that we're asking for. What I'm upset about though is the FBI doesn't think the American people are worthy of this unclassified information. I certainly do. I think the American people deserve to see it. I think know every you're single right. Bit of it. That's why when I left this gift, I made all my notes on, on this piece of paper here so pretty that good. I could explain everything to the American it's people. Pretty good. Pretty good there, Marjorie. I, I appreciate those notes. She's like keeping it, she like walks, runs out of there. I need a pen, somebody give me a pen, quick, man. And she just starts writing, it's pretty good. So we got some new details out of there and it sounds pretty damning for Joe. Makes total sense, which is why the FBI fought so hard to keep this stuff buried for so long. But now it is coming out. We have more reaction from the house. This came over from representative Nancy Mays. Here's what she posted on Twitter. Says, you know, I call balls and strikes and I call it right down the middle, but it's unconscionable. The FBI won't tell us what they've done to investigate the president's involvement in a multi-million dollar bribery scheme. And it's undeniable this document is legitimate. Multi-million dollar bribery scheme. Undeniable that it's legitimate. Well... The president got asked about that today, and he had kind of a little comical reaction to this. And here is the video. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, please remain in your seats as the principals and official delegations depart the East Room. I'm supposed to walk off the stage now. <laughs> Get, yeah, you better run. Wait, 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 wait. The bribery allegation, Congresswoman Nancy May says there's damning evidence in the FBI file that you sold out the country. Do you have a response to the congressional Republicans? Where's the money? I'm joking. Mr. President, Mr. Yeah, it's President, it's been a bunch of malarkey. Mr. President, what do you say to Americans to convince them that they should trust the independence and fairness of the Justice Department when your predecessor, Donald Trump, repeatedly attacks it? Because you notice I have never once, not one single time, suggested to the Justice Department what they should do or not do relative to bringing a charge or not bringing a charge. I'm honest. <laughs> He's honest. So he comes out, wags his finger at the media and asks them a question. Well, what do you mean? Where's the money? Where's my $5 million? If I got so much money, where is all my money at? And we go, well, we've got a lot of details that we'd like to dig into. Uh, would you care to open up these records for us to see? We've got a whole list of bank accounts. Would you like to share that for us, Mr. President? If you're saying there's no there there, as they like to say, 
You'd be open to a forensic audit, wouldn't you? Have no issues if that happened. We would just go through, verify that there's no funny business here. Jamie Raskin came out and said, this has all already been reviewed anyways. Let us see the document. Will you tell the FD1023 hall monitors at the FBI to release it? That would be very nice. But of course, that's not true at all. Here's what Nancy says. We can go ahead and dig into this. She wrote this for us, says, and since you asked, Mr. President, how about the following? The money is in your family's shell companies. Release the bank records too. And these were many of the different companies that we saw, talked about several of these before. Rosemont Seneca Advisors, Seneca Global Advisors, Rosemont Seneca Principal Investments, okay, all of the shell companies. And these have been floating around for a long time. Mace and Comer and Marjorie, they've all gone to the Treasury Department and seen the records and they've seen all of this, but now the Keystone has been made available and Joe Biden is gonna to continue to defend himself, but they're playing this game as though there's separation between what's happening, as though Joe Biden is not coordinating the Trump prosecution because he's not directly, specifically acting as the puppet master. You don't have to do that. When you're all part of the same club and all of your interests are aligned, Joe Biden doesn't have to go tell Merrick Garland to take out his political enemy. They're on the same side, so it's unspoken. Joe Biden is going to continue to play dumb, but I'm not sure how long he can continue to do that now that the records are coming out. FD-1023 has been delivered to Congress. I'm sure they're still going to be unpacking all of this and bringing us more. Of course, we'll continue to cover it. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for hitting the subscribe button and hitting that like button so that we don't miss you on the next one.